ought to make myself clear on it. Uh, my position is, as I stated it to those people here yesterday, that if the Senate and the House want to refer it, then I will support it. But uh, I'm not uh, going to attempt to push it upon the legislature. But I also, you recall, said that uh, I wasn't going to just jump out here and get another knot on my head for nothing, and that I wanted to find out, first of all, whether or not I'd be just running up against a brick wall in the Senate and the House in trying to get a referendum on it. Now that's three quarters of one million dollars. Now that is a lot of money. That would finance totally the Whitaker's Orphans Home for the biennium, gentlemen. That would finance a number of your institutions in the needs that they have. That would help a number of you with your parks. I'm simply suggesting this, gentlemen. This is a method by which we must cut corners. We must rule with our heads and not our hearts because here we must figure the dollars and cents that are involved and be ready to appropriate it to meet the needs of our people back home. Here in the last few days, if you continually keep changing or taking away, uh, your conference committee will be unable to even strike a figure that they can be assured on as being the revenue which the state can anticipate will be yielded in the next two years. I urge you to vote this bill down. It will seriously affect our present uh, critical condition. behind on our reserves. It's the reserves that count, Senor Business, not the fact that we make our allowable every day, but those reserves that we find and store away for the unborn generation yet to come. It's the little man, the little man, the wildcat man that discovers those reserves and holds them. So I say to you that this is. Time's up. In 1958, we had 4,000 less rigs running in Oklahoma than we had the year before. And this year we'll have several thousand less rigs running because they're going to these other states that offer them more in spite of Time is up, Mr. Knuckles. Uh, Virgil, actually today it hasn't had any material effect, I don't think. Uh, of course, in some of the lowlands, uh, where the wheat, uh, uh, of course, yields uh, a lot heavier than it does on the uplands, uh, 
uh, it's wiped out there, I'm sure, where the overflow of the water stall. But uh, as far as any material effect on the total uh, yield over the state, I don't think there's going to be any particular damage if it doesn't keep raining. We have a 15-day weather outlook from the uh, Weather Bureau, which predicts above normal rainfall and below normal temperatures for the state. <laughs> now, what will this do to our week? Well, of course, if that is true, if the prediction is fulfilled, it's, uh, it's going to hamper harvest in one way, and, of course, that below normal temperature will uh, delay maturing of the wheat in the uh, northern sections, the northern extremities of the wheat section. Uh, I certainly hope that, uh, that the man's wrong there. Jack, what kind of a total wheat harvest can we expect for Oklahoma this year? Well, Virgil, of course, uh, I'm uh, not an expert on uh, wheat, uh, but all the experts are telling us that there's going to be about an 80 million bushel crop this year. Uh, of course, that's in sharp contrast to the bumper crop of over 115 million bushels that we had last year. I'll say this, it's definitely going to be short of, uh, of last year's crop. Uh, it's my guess that it's going to be somewhere between 70 and 75 million bushels. What is the average uh, yearly yield for wheat here in the state, Jack? Uh, Virgil, I believe that they say that the average is around 66 million bushels in the state. So we're at least going to be above our average? Uh, I think we'll be a little above average, yes. 